next one so clive lord recently wrote open letter like encouraging the players so he mentioned in that letter how he was thrown into the mix all of a sudden in 1966 and he is encouraging the players that they should take this as an opportunity and and perform good what do you think about that letter how would it motivate the players um do you know what <laughs> so um <laughs> I'm thinking very carefully before I answer this one. <laughs> um, I don't think it's motivational, okay? Um, and this could be a bit controversial that I'm saying this because, okay, Clive Lloyd, legend. I'm not disputing that. Uh, almost like the father of West Indies cricket in the context of the success that, the, that West Indies had under his leadership. But there is a part of me, when I read the letter, my initial gut feeling when I read it was, I'm sorry to say this, I'm gonna say it. My initial gut feeling was, Clive, you're out of touch now. That was my initial gut feeling. That does not mean that Clive Lloyd isn't important in West cricket, in West Indies cricket. That's not the point I'm making. When I say out of touch, I just don't know how well something like that translates to a modern day cricket player. So I'm trying to think of like, who would I class then as an Indian great, where if they wrote a letter to an underachieving Indian, like I almost feel like, yes, we get it, Clive. Yes, you were put in a situation where you also were kind of put in when you didn't expect it, but it's a different era. It's a, it's a different time. And also this is, this is a West Indies team that doesn't know what victory really looks like at all. Like there's, it's not like there's some victories and then there's some defeats, like defeat is the norm. And whilst I get the point that he's making, I just feel like the context is so different. Um, the, the, the inexperience is so huge. Like in the ODI side, there's nine uncapped players, nine out of yeah. what, the 15? Yeah. So, and... <sighs> Do you know what? I'd, I'd love to know if no player would ever admit it. They couldn't. I, and I would have a go at them if they did. But there comes a point in any sport where actually there's probably a bit of a disconnect between the past generation and the future generation. And because the West Indies team over the last 10, 15, 20, however many years you want to call it, are consistently berated about how they don't reach the standards of what the greats did, I've always felt like that's eventually going to reach a critical point where the players don't want to hear it anymore. Mm. Uh, or, or, there, or there's a disconnect between, between I just, like, okay, so let, let's, use, let's use India, for, an ex, for example. One of the reasons why, and maybe I'm wrong, so bear in mind, my, my expertise is in West Indies cricket. So one of the reasons why I feel like the Indian team has improved massively or are now the, the team that they are is also they've set their own path they're not judging themselves based on what went on in the book Coley under Coley's leadership under Dhoni's leadership in as well there's very much this idea of this is the direction we're going in and it's not with the door open at the back saying and this is where we were in the past no it's very much this is where we're focused on going and I just feel like all the while we have the legends of the game who have a place and in West Indies cricket, obviously, but all the while we almost feel like, but what do the legends think? We can never move forward. It's almost like a heavy shadow behind us that we, that we can't, that we can never get, not get rid of, but that we can never almost paint our own, our own future. It's always going to be under the shadow of what, what the legends say and what they did. So I'm a, I'm a bit mixed on the letter. Mm. And Benefit of doubt to Clive, did he mean well by writing it? And maybe it, the way it is coming out is how you're, you're perceiving it or the fans are. But knowing him, he probably is thinking, here's my words of motivation because yeah. the seniors are not going. Let me give a pep talk to the junior members. That's how a neutral fan is reading it. Unless yeah, and I think you're right. I think you're right. And do you know what? My, as a West Indian, I've got too much. I've got too much emotion in it. So, so of course, when I'm reading it, I'm read. So I actually, I actually do agree, and that's why I'm trying not to be too critical of it because I'm not saying that Clive's done it to to be like, come on, look what I did. I don't think that's his point, but I think it could be perceived 
yeah like that in certain quarters but i think what he's what he's trying to do is the right thing but would it have any impact i'm not i don't know i don't know i don't know i, I don't know there's just a bit of me which thinks i'm not sure how much of an impact that can have yeah and when you talk about fan passion i notice that you're wearing a nice floppy west indian hat carl hooper comes to my mind the moment yes. <laughs> my my favorite player of all time is carl hooper <laughs> great yeah so coming back to the series against bangladesh bangladesh are getting four of their senior players back in the squad including shakib al hasan so how do you see this inexperienced west indies team going ahead against bangladesh like how are, how are you expecting them to compete and what is your series prediction so um <laughs> in the odis i would be shocked if it ends anything other than 3-0 um to bangladesh the only way it won't end 3-0 is if we catch them cold in the first game because the one advantage that we have over bangladesh is they be- they haven't played any cricket um and much like when west indies went to england although on paper england and the west indies are miles apart as sides particularly in english conditions the one advantage we had is we were given basically a one month camp in english conditions to get ready for the for the tour so i always felt like maybe we'll catch england on prepared in that very first match so there is a there is almost what i call a puncher's chance in the first match where maybe bangladesh aren't actually ready yet and also if they if they take the attitude at any point of look at them look at the side they've got this is we don't have to play at maximum to defeat them then they could also get caught um unawares i do feel that the test matches is oh, famous last words i do feel that the test matches <laughs> might be a bit closer than people think although we're missing holder and uh what three of the top 6 the top 6 haven't covered themselves in glory so i don't actually think losing members of the top 6 is any major thing right now and i actually think it's a positive to give some other batters a chance um in that top 6 as well so if I, the test series we'll still lose don't get me wrong we'll still lose it but but, but maybe we might be able to draw a test we might be able to draw one of those test matches um it depends it depends how much of a turner bangladesh produce so if, if bangladesh are wanting to return to cricket and get back to winning ways then they should produce some pitches which are totally suited for their for their for their spin attack and then we've got no chance yeah. but if they want to actually develop their critters and give a bit of an i'm not saying an even deck but an a test competitive deck then maybe we've got a chance 